Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, we're going to identify and graph sequences. We're more graphing on this one. We're going to graph the sequences. We did the harder part in the in the prior lesson. And don't forget, you guys, all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. And then go, when you go there to the Integrated uh, One uh, link, the Integrated Math uh, link. I have several links there. But anyways, this lesson involves uh, constructing and graphing sequences. So here we go. Let's construct and graph each uh, sequence described. Okay, remember the go-kart racing charges thing that we did in the last lesson? A go-kart uh, racing charges are $5 for a go-kart license and... I think it was two dollars for each lap. I missed my two dollars right there. Golly, let's put that back in right there. Uh, okay, and then uh, so what we're going to do is use the explicit rule two n plus five uh, uh, for this rule right here. Okay, so this we're going to build a chart right here. So let's go ahead and build this chart. Okay, so we're going to complete this table. And we're going to only do it for four laps, one lap, two lap, three lap, four lap right here. Okay, remember those numbers? It started with seven. Well, it started with seven because it was one lap times um, uh, two dollars for each lap plus the five dollars. Okay, for two laps, it's two times two dollars for each for the five dollars right there. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and plug those numbers in right there. And um, so two times one is two plus five is seven. So this is going to get us seven over here. All right. And then uh, when we plug in the other one, we get 9. And when we plug in the next one, we get 11. And then we finally get 13. Okay, now when we graph these, you guys, these are our inputs. So these are our x values. These are our output. These are our y values. So I get the ordered pair 1, 7, 2, 9, 3, 11, and then finally 4, 13. So those are all the ordered pairs that we're going to get on those, okay? All right, so then we're going to graph these. Remember, these are our x's. So when we do an x graph, that's going to be, we're going to go over 1 and up to 7 right here. So it looks like these are going by 2s, 4s. So here's 6, so here's 7 right here. So we'll put a dot right here for 1, 7 right there. And then we'll just keep going. And then here's 2, 9. So it's between the 8 and uh, the 10 right here because they're going by 2. So 8 and 10. So here's 2, 9. Here's 311, and then here's a, a 413. Now it looks like they're all, they would lie on a line if it was a line, but they're not, you guys. They're just, the, the graph is a set of points that are not connected. And it's a set of points, we'll say this a few times in here, because our domain are whole numbers. They're not, you know, fractions. They're not, they're not a segment between 1 and 4. They're actually whole numbers. So each whole number is going to get us a whole number over here for the range over here. Okay, so they're not connected. Here's another one. A movie rental club, club charges $20 a month plus $5 membership fee. So $20 a month plus the $5 membership fee. Okay, so here's our function right here. We'll go ahead and build a table right here. And we're going to um, uh, represent the charges paid for six months. Okay, so we're going to plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for our N right there. And then so 20 times 1 is 20 plus 5 is uh, 25. Okay, and then 20 times 2 is 40. 40 plus 5 is 45. Okay, 20 times 3 is 60. 60 plus 5 is 65. Can you see a pattern? They're just going up plus 20 plus 20. It's this $20 a month. So... So I'm just going to keep adding 20 for the rest of the 3 right there. So if I add 20, 85, 105, 125 right there. Okay, here's our X values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Gives us these Y values over here. So we get the ordered pairs. Uh, those 6 ordered pairs right there. Okay, so when we graph those guys... Here's our graph. I just shrunk our little picture up of our table right here. So when we go over 1, up 25, okay, it looks like these are going up to 20. This is 20, 40, 60, 80. So depending on whatever your graph that you set up, or if they give you a graph, here's 20 right here. I'm going to go a little bit past 20 for 25, and then 245. Okay, here's 2, here's 40. This would be uh, 60 right here, so 45 would be like right about there. So when we graph these points, we're going to get those six points right there. And they should look like they're going in a straight line. But again, we don't connect them. They are, uh, the graph is a set of points that are not connected. And they'll ask you, how come? Well, because the domain of this function only includes whole numbers, okay? And it only gives us whole numbers for the output, the range right here. 
Okay, here's another one. A pizza place is having a special. If you order a large pizza for a regular price of $17, you can order any number of additional pizzas for $8.50. Okay, so we're going to use the recursive formula rule. Here's the first uh, uh, term, f of 1. Remember, this is our first term, equals $17. That's because the first pizza cost $17. Okay, and then and then what we'll do is we'll use the recursive formula of f of n equals the previous uh, amount plus the 850 for each whole number greater than 1. Okay, so here we're going to only go up to 4 pizzas. Now we didn't start at 2 on this one because we already know what f of 1 is. f of 1 equals 17. So f of 2 is just going to be uh, the previous term, the first term, which is 17 plus 8.5. So 17 plus 8.5. It's always our previous term. That's what f of n minus 1 is. It's our previous term plus the 8.5. So the sec if we bought two pizzas, it would cost us $25.50. Okay, the third pizza, by the time we get the third pizza, it's going to be uh, our previous amount, which is $25.50 plus the 8.50. So we just keep adding the previous amount plus 8.50, and we get 34. Okay, the fourth term is going to again be the previous amount plus the 850. So we get uh, 42, 4250 right there. Okay, so our ordered pairs become those four sets of ordered pairs. Now they stopped at four because we're assuming they're only going to eat four pizzas, but you know we could have kept going and kept going. But we want to graph that, so let's just graph these four ordered pairs right there so they would line up right there. Okay, nice and easy, right? All right, so let's answer a series of questions here. What is the difference between an explicit rule and a recursive rule? Okay, well, an explicit rule for a sequence defines the nth term as a function of n and can be used to directly find any specific term of a sequence. So in the last uh, uh, lesson, I think we found the 20th term or something like that, and we just plugged in 20, and I think it was n squared plus 2, if I remember right. So we got... 20 squared is 400, 400 plus 2 is 402. So an explicit rule will let us find any specific term. However, a recursive rule, it's defined as the nth term that, that uh, related to the previous term. So it always has the previous term involved, and it can't be re, uh, used to directly find, you know, like the 20th term, because you need to know the 19th term, and to know the 19th term, you need to know the 18th term, and so on. So recursive rules, you can't find a specific term, but explicit rules, you can, because they give you a nice formula right there. All right, number two, describe how to use an explicit rule to find the position number of a given term in a sequence. Okay, well, if they give you a given term in a sequence, like, say, Say they say a term of a sequence is 125. Do you remember doing that? You just plug that number in. You substitute it in for your f of n because it said f of n equals some formula. And then so you substitute that number in and solve for n. And that'll tell you uh, which position that was in. So I think it was our 41st position or something like that, if you remember. So explain why the graph of a sequence is a set of points that are not connected. Okay, we've answered that a couple of times. The domain of our sequence is a collection of position numbers so it's only whole numbers that we're plugging in so we're only getting whole numbers when we get our output so they're only going to be uh, ordered pairs okay why can uh, uh, the rule for a sequence be considered a function well remember functions we only get exactly one output so each domain value which is our position number it corresponds to exactly one range number so we only get one range value so the range values are always your terms in the sequence, and the, the domain are the positions, your first term, your second term, your third term, and so on. All right, I hope that makes sense. You guys, if you're in my class, I would assign you guys that, you know, your homework assignment. Hey, and if you guys can, would you guys click like? That, that pleases me and helps encourage me. Thank you.